Hello guys and welcome to the series of web concepts and in today's video we are going to look at the differences between the stateful protocols and the stateless protocols. We will be looking into differences theoretically as well as practically. So let's begin. First of all in stateful protocol a connection or a session is established between client and the server and after this connection is established, the required communication or the required request responses happens between client and server. So all the actual required communications that include requests and response are bind by a session. Once this communication ends, the session is terminated or closed. But in case of the stateless protocol, no such connection is required before making actual request or responses. So any request can be sent arbitrarily to the server without having any prior connection or, or without having any prior session. So in stateless protocols, the requests and the responses between client and servers are not bind by a particular session or a connection. Since in stateful protocols, the connection or a session is established between client and server before any actual communication happens. So that is why the server is required to maintain the information of all the active connection that it is currently having. For example, suppose the server is connected with the 100 clients. So it need to maintain the information or the session information about the 100 different clients to which it has been connected to. Since these session information are required to be stored on the server, these protocols are generally heavy to implement and the servers are generally loaded. And some of the examples for these protocols are FTP and Telnet. But in case of the stateless protocol, no such session information is required to be stored in the server. So these type of protocols are easy to implement since this protocol doesn't require to contain the session information and also the servers are not overloaded. Some of the examples of the stateless protocols are HTTP and DNS. Now let's jump to our terminal and see programmatically what is the difference between a stateful protocol and a stateless protocol. Let's first look at the FTP that is stateful protocol. So I'm using here FTP command and I'm going to connect with this particular server with the FTP protocol. This is an open FTP server. So you can use the FTP service of this particular server without any username and password. So just like this, if you will search in Google for open FTP servers, then you will get a plenty of list for open FTP servers and you can connect to them without any password. This is one of the open FTP server. So I'm going to press enter and without any username and password, it is going to connect me. And now I can provide any commands here. For example, my first command will be pwd, which will tell me where exactly I am currently in server. So I'm currently at the root of the directory. If I want to list down the contents that is present in this root directory, I can give here ls. But the point here is that before I ask for any particular data from the server, for example, using the pwd command or using the ls command, before that I had made a connection or I had made the session from client to the server. And only after that I'm able to run this command. After this, we can write here quit to terminate this particular session or a connection. Now if we see the same thing in our coding. So I had used here a simple Python script to achieve the same thing. So first of all, we are importing a library that is FTP lib. And after that, I'm creating a session. So here with the FTP function, I'm writing the same server name and we can use anonymous as username and any arbitrary email addresses. So after this, my session has been stored in this FTP underscore session variable. And within that session variable, I'm running various command that is pwd for giving me the current working directory and d for listing out the content in the current working directory. But my commands are bind by a particular session, right? So rest of the code is pretty straightforward. Whatever is the output, I'm storing it into the pwd variable and then I'm printing it out. And same for the deed function also, I'm putting the output in the files variable and I'm simply printing the contents. And finally, I'm closing the connection. So let's run this Python script. The name of this Python script is ftp.py 
and we will see it will give us the same output that was given to us in terminal right so this is our current working directory and these are the contents that are present in them so this was about the ftp that is one of the example of the stateful protocol now let's look at the http which is an example of the stateless protocol so i'm going to open up my browser and i'm going to type here http test1 test php dot one web dot com okay so i'm using here http as a protocol now if i'm making any other request you will see in none of the cases before making the actual request i'm not making any prior connection or session with the server the request and responses are simply not bind by a session if we want to see the same thing programmatically then in this particular case if you will notice i am using here request library and after that before any making any prior session i can directly make the request to the server when i am using the http protocol note that in case of ftp before making any request we were making a session but in this particular case i can directly make the request to the server right after that i am printing the status code that will be returned from the server and also the headers from the response and for the second request also if you will notice i am not making any prior session with the server i can directly go ahead and make a request and the server will also give me some response so for second request also i am printing here status code and the headers so let's run this python script so i'm going to write here python 3 http rick.py and you will see that it will give us the required output or required responses so this is the key point that in stateful protocols a prior session or connection is required but in stateless protocols there is no prior session or a connection is required between client and the servers now there is one very important point with respect to the http http at its core is a stateless protocol but there are cases when we are required to use http and also to use some sort of methods using which we can try to use the session functionality also along with the http protocol so we want to use the http but we also want to have some sort of session between client and the server let's quickly see when the session might be required and when it might not be required consider that i had opened the linkedin.com and i had landed in its home page now in this particular case for all the users whoever is going to land to this particular page the information is required to stay the same doesn't matter whether i land to this page or you land to this page the server is not required to uniquely identify the client or uniquely identify you and me at this moment so in this particular case there is no requirement of the session but consider another case in which i had logged into the linkedin and also you had been logged into the linkedin now in this particular case the server is required to uniquely identify who is making the request so in this particular case if i am making the request the server is going to return me the data that is related to me and also if you are making any other request the server needs to uniquely identify that since you are making the request only your required data to be sent back to you so in this particular cases the server is required to use http but it also needs to have some functionality related to the session so that it can fulfill its requirements with respect to the clients now as i mentioned http at its core is a stateless protocol but we are required to make this stateless protocol to have some sort of functionality so that if session is required it should be able to do and this is where the cookies come into picture cookies when used with the http protocol it gives the server a platform or a method using which it can maintain the session between client and the server even though the individual requests are not bound by a session like we see in the stateful protocol but with tokens or cookies the session information is maintained we will discuss about the cookies in details in some other video but keep in mind that cookies plays a very important or critical role when it comes to the web application 
So that's all for today guys. I hope you like the video. If you have any doubt, please comment it down. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.